So let's imagine, okay, so I'm going to erase some of my wreckage here so that I can just write what 27 looks like. 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Okay, so there's my 27. How about if I imagine that, although this is a magic alien machine, that it doesn't actually make pebbles disappear and appear. So the pebble that gets created here actually gets made out of the two pebbles from here, so it weighs more. Like this box, all the pebbles that I'm throwing in there, let's just say for simplicity, weigh one ounce each. How much would this pebble have to weigh then? Two ounces. So this would be the two ounce pebbles would appear in this box. What about when a pebble appears in this box? Four ounces. How about in this one? Eight. How about in this one? So how many ounces of pebbles do I have now? Oh, 27. OK, so I think what, what I'd like to think about next is, could I think of this 27 pebbles that I want to put in and figure out about this final state without having to go through all the explodey steps in the middle? Like, do I know, is there a reason I can tell whether there should be, I guess the only possibilities for a box are zero or one pebbles? Because if we have two, they'd explode. So how can I tell when I'm going to put 27 pebbles in there whether that last one is going to end up having a pebble in it or not? So if I put in an odd number of pebbles, all the twos explode and make things in the next box. And since 27 is odd, I'm going to be left with one here for sure. How can I tell whether there'll be a pebble left here or not when I look at 27? So, so we're saying is 27 is odd, therefore there will be a one ounce pe pebble. How can I tell looking at the 27 without going through all the explodey steps whether there'll be a two ounce pebble left? Because if you look at like three, seven, there's one there. Three, seven, and fifteen, for example, have one here. Okay. So this box. Yes, with 3 and 7 and 15. We can see that from the data I've collected so far. You might have more data. So what makes 27 like 3, 7, and 15, I guess, is the question? Yeah. Well, here, here's what we have more basic on the middle school teacher, but we, we looked at that second to last number, and it went in pattern 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and we did a few. OK, so we have this pattern going. There's 0, 1, 1, 0. And if I hadn't done my recycling, because I was focusing just on getting 27, but if I was doing the organization looking for a pattern kind of strategy, you found that this 0, 1, 1, 0 pattern repeats. Yeah, every four. And so where will 27 fall in that cycle of every four? It'll be back at zero. 27, 28 would be like here, because a multiple of four. So 27 would be one before it, so it's going to have a one there. Pretty cool. In the next box, we, did, we saw patterns of eight. Every eight repeated. Yeah. yeah. And, and then on the top line up there, you put in um, 11. That kind of goes along. On the on oh, so right next to your yes. you're repeating pattern, you're going to say it's 11. Oh, you're yeah. going up you're by four. You're going up also, by four. 15, 19, 23, 27. Those will all be yeses. Pretty cool. OK, so another interesting way to think about it is no matter what the situation is, if I have pebbles in these boxes, what do I know about the total weight of all those pebbles that has to be true for sure? Could it be 97 ounces of pebbles total? Just forgetting about these two boxes, only in this part of the machine. Could I have 97 ounces of pebbles in there exactly? 
Why not? Oh. Okay, well, how about 98 ounces of pebbles then? I'm seeing some shaking heads. Why not 98 ounces of pebbles? Ah. So everything in these boxes is for sure a multiple of four. Because this is four ounces, and then this is two groups of that, and two groups of that, and two. I'm just going to make things in groups of four ounces forever. So now when I'm thinking about 27, what part of my 27 ounces could live in that part of the machine over there? 24 ounces is going to live over there. What's going to live in this part of the machine down here? The remaining three ounces. So we can see why this pattern occurs that you discovered is because the whole rest of the machine always has to contain some multiple of four ounces. And so when you take away the multiple of four ounces that lives in this part of the machine over here, your remainder of one, two, three, or four, or zero, I guess, I don't know what you want to call it, whether you'd rather call this four or zero, um, determines what these last two boxes are going to look like.